Hi, this is Mike at Type Ed. Have you ever been in a, a bookstore and you're, you're rummaging through magazines or some books and you see a large type similar to this? This is an example that I found, oddly enough, in a Type Foundry book. But oftentimes I see centered content like this and, you know, the punctuation looks a little off. And it's not really the punctuation, it's the type itself and how it's aligned. And there's this rule in typography about punctuation overhanging where the actual punctuation does overhang, even in centered alignment. So I want to show you how we could, you know, maybe make this a little bit better here. So I have this original here, you know, scanned right from the book, and then I reset it. It's using Avenir Bold, I believe. And so this is kind of now my text box. Just I do this just to see how it's been typeset and see what the sizes are and the numbers. And so what I want to do is, is take this and copy it and paste it on a new page to size. And I've actually adjusted the the margins and added a center line of, of a column in there just so I can see my centered type in there. So I'm going to adjust this just to make this a little bit better. The other thing about this is that the type is so big, you have a lot of tracking or letter spaces in between each character. And right now it's, it's up here at 50. And usually when you have larger type, especially at 60 point, you want to move down in tracking or a negative number. And of course it depends on the typeface, but I have this matcher in type ed where the larger the type gets, the, the less letter spacing or tracking you need. The smaller the type gets, the more letter space or tracking that you need, maybe plus versus minus. So in this case, I want to show you that as well. So with 60 point type, the first thing I'm going to do is make this tracking zero and tighten it up a bit. And that's the first thing. The other thing is, as lar it's got so much letting, it looks like it's being pushed out to the vertical ends of the page. So right now it's at 60 over 72 which is great, it's in proportion. But again, this is maybe a case where if it's a header like this, you may want to take out the, some lead. So that's another thing I'm gonna do is maybe make it over 65 and get it more towards the middle of the page. Another rule that I use is, is when your type is larger where you can see the inadequacies in the kerning, you may wanna change it from metrics to optical, right? And then you could tweak from there. So you can see it's, it's been tweaked from here because this has been brought down. The spacing has been brought down there. So with mine, I can let it out if I want to. To get this centered um, correctly with the punctuation, what you want to do with this kind of situation where you have either quotes out here or an ellipse or a period, the thing you want to see is that the type aligns to the self, the actual characters, and then the punctuation overhangs. And in this case, the first line is a dead giveaway. So if I look at my centered portion of, if I'm just lining the centered portion of the characters, I really want this type to be here. And I put in a blue line, I'll take out the baseline just so we can see it. That's really where I want to have it centered to the type rather than the, and have the punctuation over here. So, so all you really have to do with this first line is, you know, bring in the right margin until it's aligned like this box. So the punctuation is overhanging. Okay. You also want to just check that for each one as you go down to make sure it's, you know, it's centered, especially with a big, big one like this. So it needs to come over a bit here. Maybe it's too far to the maybe it's a little bit too far to the to the left, so I can bring in the left, or it looks like it already has some here, so I can just take this out. Yeah, so there's my true center there, or visual center if you will. And you know, I'll just go down and check all these just as I'm doing it. And make sure that you know, I've got it centered. So a lot of these look like they have, I'm just going to go reset all these to zero. And I'm over here in my paragraph um, palette over here. So just with that, I can now just go check to see, you, know, you can quickly move down like I'm doing. And really you want to just go in, in the process of doing this. Let's say there was like a dozen instances in this large book. This would be a, uh, thing I would do last is go back and check everything to make sure this punctuation is right or set it up in my, my styles. So with this one, this last line, I want to center it to the type again and let the period overhang. 
So with this, I can just move the left margin and let the period overhang like this, okay? So visually, you would want the type to be centered to itself. See how this space and this space and all these spaces on the side are, are to itself. It's almost like if I turned the punctuation off in color, then everything would be aligned and centered, right? Like this. And that's how you'd want to look at it, okay? Just a little adjustment there of making the type closer together. The main thing was the punctuation, of course, but to look at a before and after, here's before and after. Okay, so it's just a little tighter. Another rule of thumb when you're typesetting this large, always try to sound out how you read it, you know, because when you add space in between characters, you're going to read a little bit slower, okay? So when you have type this big, you can bring the characters closer together because we're going to speak naturally, you know, at an even pace. Now, a little thing I would just hear too is, is the proportion of these word spaces to the actual character space. Now, you'd want to set these up in your, in your paragraph styles, but I'm just going to adjust these by eye just so you can see what I'm looking at. And I'm just going to kern these a little bit more since there's only two of them. So somewhere in here, or they're just a little closer and but it doesn't, it's not too close where you don't see it as one word on each line, okay? So that's the before and after of punctuation, overhanging punctuation. You want to keep that in mind. You see how this line is offset, and this one's a little bit offset. So you'd want it to look more like this, okay? And that's it for overhanging punctuation. Thank you. <laughs>